What is up players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud and this is my entry number two into Idic Beer's March Terrain competition. Oh, let's get some light on this bad boy. Alright, so look what I've been able to do in the past day, a little bit over a day and a half maybe. I uh, spackled the base using some plaster and, um, and then I added some ballast some odds and ends. I still gotta put in some um, barbed wire, but I, I went with the Forge World Masterclass Volume One. It said that barbed wire gets these little rod things with the little loops in them. Uh, not sure what those are, but that's I guess that's the historical way of doing them. They did it for their Deathcore Creek Earthshaker diorama, so I thought I'd I'd copy it. And ballast and some plaster. <clears throat> I added a little light over there and let's see yeah let's so let's let's take you through those are the general things I did I added some sandbags had a lot more fun making these stupid sandbags than I was afraid I would I really had a good time so there you go and some of them are kind of limp and deflated so I, I might cut little holes in them and make it look like the sand all drained out of them but overall I had fun making them and and putting them up uh, the, without them, the regular sandbag pieces that I had looked just so, so too clean for me, for my tastes. So, let me tell you what my piece is. Also, you can see I added the Pegasus barrels over there in the front, and some other odds and ends. So, in the beginning I was thinking, well, this is probably going to be an overrun uh, Imperial Guards station over here. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if there's a little bit more story to it than that? And this is the inspiration for my diorama piece, my terrain piece. Uh, if you remember in Saving Private Ryan when they're in the very end of the movie when they're all kind of holed up in that little town and uh, they're, they're kind of pretty much set on on dying together and not making it out alive. I've, uh, I've, I took a lot of inspiration from that because in the end when they kind of rig the bridge to blow and, and all of that I thought well wouldn't it be cool if in 40k there's an Imperial Guard regiment stationed here on this manufactorum and they realize they're not gonna make it and the commanding officer uh, decides to destroy the manufactorum, destroy all of the secrets inside so that the enemy, whoever it is, orcs, aliens, necrons, Eldar, cannot get their hands on Imperial technology. Maybe there's an STC, standard template construct inside, or uh, maybe there is an important weapon that can't fall into enemy hands, but whatever it is, he decides that he is going to um, sacrifice himself, the survivors of his of his regiment and um, and the entire building that they're fighting over. So I I kind of went with that. I really enjoyed it. I, I thought that was a really cool narrative way of, of doing it. So the first thing I did was I you I had a Warhammer 40k Battlefield accessories kit, and you you'll see that there's a crate of ammo. And it's, it's really pretty cool. I've, I've never noticed before, but you've got bolter clips in the front, um, different ammunitions uh, and stuff in there. And I, I think that's pretty cool. So I decided to put that in my in my diorama, in my terrain. And then I decided that these barrels from Pegasus Hobby Company are going to be full of promethium, ready to explode, primed to go. And so I uh, got this little radio control piece from, I believe it was the Aegis Defense Line. I didn't, I ended up not using it and saved it. And uh, I thought it, was, it would be perfect. It's like a remote detonator. So there's one. I used uh, the um, cord wire from Gale Force 9 miniatures to make like the, the det cord, the detonation cord. I also use a lot of stuff like the Gale Force 9 wire for the uh, debris and stuff. I clipped out sprue pieces to make like bricks or just random pieces. Uh, these I -beam, plastic I-beams I put in. Um, even some brass rod wire. Just sticking out all over everywhere. So just to add a little bit of you know narrative elements to it. Um, let's take a look at the second floor. I also used the snake wire to make kind of overhanging pieces of the terrain from the bombed out building. You might also notice some Death Corps of Krieg rifles because I feel like the Death Corps of Krieg would be the 
the regiment that would be most happy to sacrifice themselves and everything to get rid of the enemy. So there's some rifle, last rifles ready for firing in strategic locations. And uh, what else can we look at? So yeah, so there's that ready to blow. There are these Promethean tanks ready to blow. When you look at the front here, um, there's a whole lot of extra missiles from different different kits. I, I kit batched a lot of different stuff like the heavy weapons, Cadian heavy weapons teams um, has some missiles, some Sentinel uh, hunter killer missiles. There are some little ammunition rounds from the the Bane Blade kit, and um, yeah, some really huge rockets. Here's another little remote detonator here in the front, and you can see the, the detonation cord winding all around. So the last thing I have to do is add barbed wire here to the front, and then I can start priming and, and painting this thing. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, also, you've got over here on top on the third floor and the crow's nest where the commander is going to be perched. There is the radio that he's going to use to call in and remotely detonate and destroy this whole place. The last thing that that detonation is going to do is send a little charge through this one up and over and to this salvaged Valkyrie rocket pod here in the back and I, I thought like I, I saw the rocket pod in my in my bits box and I thought what can I do with it and I thought it would be pretty cool and thematic and very Kriegy and imperially like a big uh, middle finger to the to the bad guys if that rocket pod aims and fires at the standard so that oops so that the, uh, the enemy does not capture their flag. And um, I think that's pr pretty fun. And uh, th it just gives you something to look at from this side of the, this side of the terrain piece. Because mostly you, you see like the front side of the building and there's not much going on in the back. So I tried to make, even down to that last rifle all the way over there in the corner, I tried to make, that, um, m make it so that there's always something to look at no matter what side of this piece you're at. The brass rod flag is connected to these chains, to to the uh, rod here. I was thinking maybe first I would have a detonation cord going up in uh, the corner of the building. Let's see if I can flip this guy around. First I was thinking I'd have a little piece of wire going up to the top and then uh, having something like a rocket or something exploding the post. But then I thought, you know what, it would be cool to have uh, that little rocket pod right over there shooting so I am I'm so stoked about that I, I'm, I don't know why I'm so excited about that little rocket pod uh, but yeah let me know what you guys think I think this is pretty cool there's oh there's also on the battlefield accessories kit a little uh, gas can a little jerry can of gasoline petrol so um, I might find a place for that too somewhere around here but let me know what you think of my little terrain piece diorama uh, I've um, I had so much fun building it. I hope the painting um, doesn't, you know, drain me or wear me out. I've got the weekend, hopefully, to get some work on it done before Monday and the 31st. So wish me luck, you guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, thank you, Nick, again for hosting this awesome terrain challenge for the month of March 2014. Uh, talk to you guys later. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already. Blah 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 blah, blah. and we'll see you in the next one. Later.